Okay, so we have A, we have B, because it is one, we don't have to write it. C is two, D, and for every C, we need one B. We have uh, some items, item B, C, and D. Uh, it tells us that the lead time for B, C, and D are one, two, one. It means that whenever we decide to purchase or produce an item B, it would take one time, one unit of time, in this case weeks, uh, it will take to produce it or to purchase it, to, for it to arrive. And then uh, on hand inventory, you know, it's, it's 100 units for B. There is no A on hand. There is some C on hand and some D on hand. And the uh, scheduled receipt uh, also is important. We, uh, we don't expect anything to arrive, but we think that C, some people will send us 200 um, in week two. And for D, some, we will have some receipt, you know, for example, return from past purchases or what somebody else owes to us, they will arrive in week three for D, okay? So these are all time domain aspects that are added. So I write the demand for A. This is A demand. And these are the weeks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it turns out that there is no demand. Nobody wants to buy anything uh, in the first two weeks. The first three weeks. And please read the demand for me. 150. Thank you. 300. 50. 200. So this is the demand and we are working on A. Just some information about A is given to us. A is, uh, it's lot for lot. Uh, basically this is lot for lot with a lead time of one week. So this is the demand. This is what customer wants. So our plan, you can call it production plan, or you can call it planned order. Just imagine that if you're in a factory, it's order to the production team. If you are in a store, it's an order to purchase. So if the lead time is one week for your production team to produce it or for the supplier to send it to you, when do you order? When you, as the operation manager, where do you order? Just think about this. Do, do we release any orders uh, in week one? No. Do we release any order in week two? No. Do we release any order in week three? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because one week later, we will need 150. So just notice that this is dictated by the fact that maybe I also related to this. So you see the logic behind it. Okay. And similar in week four, we will order 300 and with six, we will order 50 to be produced and here 200 to be produced. Okay. So basically plan our plan for A, very easy. Uh, look at the bill of material in the previous page and tell me what is the next product that we have to plan its production in time domain. B, C, D. Can we start planning for B? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. John, thank you, Ken, since you should have to plan for C first. Just a question. So we would do C and D before B? Yeah, of course. We cannot plan for B if you don't know what is the plan for C. If you don't know when you are going to produce how many Cs, then you cannot plan for your B production. So we have two options. 
we can either plan for C or we can plan for D, whatever we want. So how about we plan for C and then for D, okay? So, and then for, uh, after C, we can actually do B. So this is the plan for C. Again, these are the weeks, three, four, five, six, seven. Now the demand for C is dictated by the production of A. So is there any demand for C in the first week? No. No. Is there any demand for C in the second week? No. no. Is there any demand for C in the third week? No. Yes, we have to start the production okay. of 150 A's. And I show you that by this line. And how many C's do we need? 150. No, I wanted you to have this uh, bill of material. Let it be side by side of whatever you are doing and answer me. If we want to produce 150 A's at that time that we want to produce that, how many C's do we need? 300. Very good. If we want to produce 300 A's, how many C's do we need? 600. Lovely. And you 100. can see how. Thank you. 400. Yes, thanks a lot. So you see that uh, this effect of the production plan for A will dictate the demand for C. C has a lead time of two, maybe I write it here, lead time, just L is obvious, a lead time is uh, two weeks. And uh, for C, we have a, an on-hand inventory, we write it here on hand inventory of 10 and we have a scheduled receipt as well in week two. Scheduled receipt in week two. How about we do it the reverse way? We write the scheduled receipt first. Scheduled receipt in week two, two hundred. Can I just stop you for one sec? <clears throat> um, for the demand um, in C, there you just took what we did for the bill of materials, and because it's a multiplier of two, you took the planned order quantity, or did you take the demand of A and multiply that by two? Not the demand. It is the production plan of A that dictates the demand. You know, nobody is going to our company to buy any C's. They, bond, they want to buy the finished good. But we, to sell that finished good, we need to produce it. And for every um, production of A, we would need two C's. So the planned order uh, for... <clears throat> production plan in case of a factory for A dictates the demand for C. And then we have some receipts that is going to happen and we have an on-hand inventory of 10. Okay, I got you. That makes sense now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. Okay. So it is the on hand inventory that dictates how much we produce. 
So let's think, of, and, and the lead time is two weeks. Just pay attention to that as well. And the system of the inventory system, we have fixed period system, fixed quantity system. We have lot for lot uh, or chase strategy we discussed. So there are many strategies for C. The strategy is lot for lot. Yeah, exactly. Lot for lot. It's the same as chase strategy. Another name for it is just in time inventory system. Another name is zero inventory. These are all names for the same thing. So basically, whatever we need, we will produce, and there is nothing left in the warehouse. But at the beginning of the period, there would be 10 on hand, because there was 10 on hand at the beginning. That is out of our control. And um, now my, I write the planned order release. I mean, what does SR stand for? No, 200? Scheduled receipt. Okay. Good. Okay, so now what is important for us is the planned order. Okay, so uh, in week three, we need to have 300. If we don't do anything, uh, Notice that the lead time is two weeks. So two weeks before, which is on week one, we have to think about it. Uh, we need 300. 10 is on hand. 200 will arrive. So how much will we order to be produced? 90. Very good. And we'll do that two weeks ahead of time. Notice that this... No, this 90 will arrive two weeks later. The on hand inventory will grow in week two. We will have 210, but we don't consume it. Uh, in week uh, three, this 90 will arrive. I just show you. And uh, we will ha we have 210, 90 will arrive two weeks later. We will have 300 and all of those 300 will be consumed based on this plan. So how much would be the on hand inventory? Zero. zero. Perfect. This is because this system is zero inventory management or JIT or chase or lot for lot. Uh, that's why we design it like that. So now for week four, again, we have to think two weeks ahead. But we know that this 210 will be consumed in week three. So how much would be our 600. order? Yes, exactly. And notice that because inventory in this system would remain zero, uh, so the next order for two weeks later would be 100. And to satisfy that two weeks later, our order would be zero and we don't need to produce anything else. Good. Notice that we now brought the time domain. Not only we are saying that we have to produce 1,190 of C, but also we are saying that how, when these C items should be produced. Good. Ready? How about we do B, because B is affected by these two. So I have to zoom out. Now that we have these two together, let's think about the next item. Now we are going to work on B. B. What is the situation for B? B is, what is the production, uh, what is the inventory system for B? 
And look at exhibit 1314 and answer me. It's fixed order quantity. Yeah, fixed order quantity. Lot sizing and MRP record. Yeah, um, we will talk about that. So lot sizing, it's fixed order quantity. The other name that we had for that inventory system is called fixed quantity system. You know, we order uh, always the same amount based on the economic order quantity and that was your case and everything. And the lead time for B is? One week. Oh, okay. One week. One week. And we know the system. And if this is the fixed quantity system, what is that fixed order quantity for B? 800. Okay, so maybe I write it somewhere so we don't forget that. Uh, the fixed quantity system Q star or EOQ is 800. So every time that we have to order, we have to be very careful about that. And these are the weeks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, the demand for B, demand for B will be dictated, you know, we need B both for A, now again, I draw your attention to the bill of material. For, to produce A, we need B and C, one B and two C. So now, <clears throat> so for every A, we need, um, so look at this. In the first week, do we need any Bs? We are not producing any As, but we are producing 90 Cs. For every C, how many Bs do we need? One. Very good. So if you are producing 90 Cs, that dictates a demand of 90 for B, okay? In week two, we are not producing any A's, but we are producing 60 C's. So how many B's do we need? 600. Very good. Now, in week three, we are producing 150 A's and 100 B's. Uh, 100 C's. So how many B's we need? 250. Very good. And in week four... So 100. Very good. So maybe I show you this link so you know where is this coming from. And then we need 150 in week five. And, uh, oh, no, no, no. We only need 50. 50 in week five and 200 because we are not producing any C's and nothing, right? So this is the demand for B. Again, we have to be careful about scheduled receipts. So do we have any scheduled receipts of B? No, we don't. No, okay. Do we have any on hand inventory? Yes, 100. 100, okay. Notice that the designer of the question have been careful, otherwise this company would have bankruptcy problems. Uh, so look at that. They, they put uh, 100 inventory so they can actually continue. <clears throat> and our goal is to think about the plan. So uh, we want to think of the ordered plan. Plan order by the operations manager to tell the people what to produce, okay? So um, lead time is one week. So we have to immediately think about this 600 that we need next week, right? Uh, for the first week, we are fine at the end of the first week, how much is the on-hand inventory? 10. 10. 
Perfect. Now for the next week, we need 600. 10 is on hand. So how much do we need? 590. So how much do we order? 590. That was a tricky question. It's 800. Exactly. Because fixed order it's quantity. a fixed order quantity or fixed quantity system. I mean, how so did you consider that? 800, where did that come from? Uh, that is um, square root of 2D cost of ordering divided by cost of holding. Economic order. What is this coming from? Yeah, EOQ is square root of 2D cost of ordering divided by cost of holding. Somebody has done that calculation for us and they told us that the fixed quantity system is 800. For Dean, it's page 281, exhibit 1314. This is where the, they give it to us. Okay. Okay, so um, how much do we order? 800. 800. Although we need 590, we order 800 because the supplier doesn't accept. And uh, at the end of the second week, the on-hand inventory will be... 210. Well, very good, 210. Now, the lead time is one, don't forget that. So we have to focus on this 250. We need 250, but we have 210. So we have to put an order for the next week. So how much do we need? 40. No, we need 40. But how 40. much do we order? 800. Very good. This 100 will arrive next week. Uh, we will have 1,010 units, 250 will be consumed. So please do the calculation. 1,010 minus 250. 760. Very good. 760. Now we have to plan for the next week. Uh, we need 70. Do we order anything? Yes, 800. No, we have 760, we are fine. So we just consume that. At the end of week four, how much do we have? 60. Very good. Now next week we will need 50. Uh, do we need to order anything? No. 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 So we will consume that and there would be 10. Uh, we have to plan for the next week. There are 200 demands, we have 10. We are short 190. So how much do we produce? 800. 800. And then we will have 810. 610 would be in the warehouse. Notice that fixed quantity system, because it doesn't chase the demand, uh, it's not a zero inventory system. It's dictated by the supplier that only accepts an order of 800. Good. So um, let this be a dumb question, but um, with the fixed order quantity system, we're not forced to actually order every time if we have them on hand. We only order them if there's like a shortage of however many we need, correct? Exactly. Okay. And in real life, actually, you may order when it goes below the reorder point. The, you're not including the complexity of the reorder point here. Uh, but uh, in real life, your inventory system, whenever it goes below the reorder line, they would uh, put a purchase order. But basically, you can assume that this is a fixed inventory system, fixed quantity system without safety. Amir, yes. just a question. It might be irrelevant, but in real life, don't they have softwares to calculate everything nowadays? They have. Okay. They have what you said? Like the softwares to do it automatically. Uh, yes, but uh, you are the operations manager and if you want to order a software, you need to know what that software is supposed to do. 
So if you don't know what is the difference between planned order and a scheduled receipt and demand, and how are these calculated, then you won't be able to be an intelligent user of the software. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, so and then also there are different softwares with different complexities. Notice that this is a very simplified form. Um, in real life, it may be simpler than this. You may have, you may buy a, you know, there may be a system that doesn't include a scheduled receipt. So now you know that a scheduled receipt is a good feature to have in that software. And there are also other systems that not, not only have all of these variables that we are discussing, they may have a reorder point, they may have safety stock and all of the other considerations. Consider, you know, notice that you are assuming that everything is deterministic in these calculations. The real life software may include a lot of other things, including the uncertainty of each one of these, which makes it statistical. Okay. So the only thing that we, you know, we know when and how much we have to plan for A, for B, and for C. The only thing that is left to be planned is the production plan for D. Okay. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, what is the lead time for D? One week. Very good. And what is the system for D, the inventory system? Periodic order quantity. Periodic order quantity. What was the name that we used for it in the previous chapter? In the inventory system, when the period is constant instead of quantity was constant. What did we call it? Fixed period. Fixed order yeah. period. Yeah, fixed period system, right, exactly. So, and uh, uh, if, it, if it is a fixed period system, instead of telling us what is the economic order quantity, they must tell us T. What is the time, that fixed time between two orders? Two weeks. For D. Two weeks. Okay, very good. So now we know that it is two weeks. Okay, now we have to think about the demand. Demand for D is dictated by what? A. By A. So I use the red color so you know what is dictating it. For every A that we produce, we need a, an, a D. So please, uh, I have to scroll down. You read the production plan for A. For every A that we produce, we need a D. D zero for week one. Production, right? Okay. Um, week two. 50. I think for week two. Demand for week two for A is? Zero. Zero demand for week three is yeah, just read them for me. 150, 300, 50, and 200. Then zero. Perfect. It comes from this production plan. So we know the demand. Is there any scheduled receipts? 50 on week three. 50. Good. Is there any on hand inventory for D? 40 units. 40. 40. Good. And our job as operation manager is to find out uh, the plan order. Basically, we have to tell the departments what to produce or buy. So lead time is one week. Uh, the inventory at the end of the first period is 40. Uh, and it will remain 40 so far. The demand in, and also, uh, yeah, in the demand for week three is 150. And one week before at this box, 
I have to make my decision. This is the probably most complex and counterintuitive thing in all of these. So one week before, I have to produce uh, for that 150. 40 on hand, 50 will arrive. So how much should I produce? 60. Very good. So I will produce 60. This 60 will arrive. And by the end of the third week, I will have zero, right? Don't we need to produce for the next week too, since we order every yeah. two weeks? Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. We will talk about that later. So we took care of this 150. For week four, I need 300. The lead time is one week. So I want to produce one week ahead because of the lead time. Just show you the lead time is one week. Therefore, I have to, in the week before, week four, I have to plan for production. Unfortunately, it's a fixed period system. I cannot put an order until two weeks later because now this one says no. So what I have to do is that I have to plan before. If I plan here, it's too late. So I have to plan to, instead of the week before, which was the lead time, I have to include it in my order here. So instead of 60, how much do I order? 360. Exactly. Yeah. So I will order 360. This 300, <clears throat> this 300 would be in the warehouse at the end of the third week. And it would be consumed by the end of the fourth week. Uh, Amir, can you go over that again? Like, yeah, please. Like, <clears throat> okay, so, so far, we are ordering 60 in week two. And everything is fine. This yeah. 60, this 60 will arrive one week later. Just uh, maybe I make it green. Notice that the lead time, <clears throat> the lead time is one week. So this 60 that we order will arrive next week. 60 will arrive, 40 is on hand, 50 will arrive. I will have 150, the consumption is 150. Everything is fine. Good? Yeah. Now, for this 300, the lead time is one week. So I like to order that here. Right? One week before, it will arrive and will satisfy the need for the fourth week. Yeah. Good. Can we order in week three, 300 units? No. Why not? Because it dictates that we need two weeks in order to yeah, do Because period. this is a fixed period system with the time interval of two. If my first order here is here, my next order can only be here and here. And my next order can only be here. Uh, basically, this interval of two is dictated to me. So I want to order in week three, but I can't. So what do I do? We order ahead in the first. Very good. Yeah. So we order here. In a sort of 60, we will order 360. But then that's. 300 is extra, so at the end of the third week, there would be 300 extra that will be used in the fourth week. Good. Amir? Yes. 
Uh, before, when you mentioned 60, uh, under week two, won't that 60 not arrive in time for the 150? Because that's only one week. Yeah, the lead time is one week. I highlight it for you. One week is enough. Okay, okay. What is the two weeks? I'm getting a little bit confused. It's the time. In a fixed period system, in the inventory management chapter, if you remember, we have two systems of inventory. You have to look at inventory management chapter. One technique is that you have a fixed quantity, like 800 every time that you order. The other technique is fixed period system, that the supplier says you can only order at the beginning and in the middle of every month, every two weeks. The supplier doesn't ask, accept from you to randomly show up and buy things. Okay. This is called fixed period system. And half of the previous chapter was about that. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. And uh, so in the fixed period system, okay, so, so far we are fine. Now we have to take care of this 50. I want to order that 50 here. So it will arrive next week. Can I? No. Why yeah. not? Yes. Yes, yeah. yes you yeah. can order Look that at 50. this. I can order every two weeks. So this 50 is fine. Oh, sorry, sorry. 50 will arrive. It will be consumed. Okay, I am fine. Now for this 200, I want to order here. Can I? No. So what do I do? At order 50, ahead. you order yeah, 200. Order ahead again. So I will order here that I can 250. And this, there would be some extra 200 left in the warehouse, which will be consumed here. Uh, so do we need any other thing? No, that's it. So basically our order to the production department would be these two. We will have only two orders we are draw a box around that and i suggest you when you are facing a fixed period system once you make your decision about the the first order make a box on those times that you can actually order so you don't do a mistake okay so once i make the first order then i know that i cannot have an order here i cannot have an order here i can have an order here so, you know, this, uh, you know, allocation of the time that you can order based on the T will prevent you doing any mistake. So you're essentially stockpiling inventory with the assumption that it's going to be used in the next week. Not assumption, you are planning. We know what is needed. The marketing department told us that we are not stockpiling. We are... We know that the demand for A, somebody has purchased 150 of our finished good. Let's say it's a car. And if we need to produce those cars in weeks four, five, six, seven, considering the time that it takes to produce the other components, we will produce these components based on this plan. So we are not stockpiling anything. There are just some limitations. For example, for production of D, we cannot order randomly at any time that we want. For production of B, we cannot order any size that we want. The size is negotiated by the supplier. I guess stockpiling wasn't the right term, like proactively. Purchasing. Yes, but that is good. We are proactively planning. I love that term, yes. We are proactively planning the production of all of the work uh, in progress to make sure that the finished good will be produced exactly on time. Good. When we do these questions, we just assume that there's no safety stock. I mean, we're just- Yes, 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 yes. And that is basically done when you actually use a software that incorporates all of that. So this is the, if you look at the last page of this uh, chapter, you'll see that in page 283, it is, showing you what we just did, but I just animated that, you know, solid picture so you can understand 
what are those flow lines and so forth in page 283. And by that, we have finished this chapter. I highly recommend you do questions like question 11, definitely. Uh, you know, questions 12 and, you know, 13, 14 are a Can little bit. Question, it doesn't matter the page number. Question 11 of chapter 11. I suggest you work on those kind of questions. There are many examples of them until you are, you feel really good about uh, dealing with this. Because we have a question on bill of material, the simple form that we had the previous week, previous, previous session, and we will have a more complex question like this that you have to actually plan the production, considering the time domain. I have a question, Amir. Sure. Do we have to do, when it says planned order receipts and planned order releases, do we have to do that? Yeah, plan order, planned order is your job. Yes, so receipt need... is basically dictated to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you know, you are not, you know, you, if there is a receipt and there is some products are going to arrive, then your decision doesn't matter, but you have to consider the fact that some order will, rece will be received. Your job is to consider the scheduled receipt, consider on hand inventory, consider all of the ripple effects of other needs, and then tell the production people what should they produce. So you, you consider scheduled receipt, but you calculate the planned order. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. This is the relationship. So uh, let me tell you in another word. Scheduled receipt is your input as the operation manager. Plan is your output, plan order. You order people what to do. 